let's go. Ooh, all right. What's the first race car you were ever in? You don't want to know. I do want to know. So the first car race I did was, uh, it's called, uh, it's from Chevy in Colombia, it's a Sprint. Yep. That is like a little Suzuki Swift, pro, pro UK. Okay. It's a uh, 1000 cc. And 15, 16? Uh, it was like 16, 16, 17, at the okay. end of 16. A friend of mine um, that was racing go karts moved the cars before me and he was racing the championship and he broke he had a big shunt and broke his leg oh. so for the last race he asked me to suffer for him and i did a good job i won both races <laughs> so he was ahead of, and then we don't know how it went from there a couple formula yeah. one wins in there yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing major no, yeah no i think anyone could do that yeah easy what, what got you into motorsport then? Because obviously your friend got you into that car. I know your son's driving. I yeah, my I dad My dad used to race. My dad raced go-karts and he's the one that really got me into racing. Yep. My uncle ra raced cars, raced actually IMSA uh, back in the day here. I did Le Mans and everything, so it was pretty cool. Because you, you raced in a pretty competitive era. Who was the like, most competitive that you were like, damn, like I need to be more like that guy or that guy's pushing me to be better? You know, honestly, when I went to Formula 1, Ralph Schumacher was so quick and he made my life really miserable at the beginning and he made me a better driver. Yep. He made me push further than I ever did and he got me to a, like a whole new level, but it was great. Uh, and the guy you always wanted to race and beat was Michael. Yeah. You know, Schumacher. if I could make his life miserable, he would make my day. He was very complimentary um, of you. He wasn't always of some people, but he said you were the one driver he feared. He, he, he knew you could rival him. Well, the problem is I just didn't care. I mean, I care because I wanted to beat him, but I didn't care. People had a lot of respect for him and would give him my ex Oh, it's Michael. Oh. And I was like, Michael. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. You can give too much respect to someone, right? And then yeah, you and intimidate yourself. Yes. What was the worst, like, you come back to pit lane, presumably visor down, don't talk to me. What was the worst one you ever had where you were just so embarrassed by it? Probably my first year in Monaco in the race, like lap three. I was really, I was pushing like qualifying, full fuel, like, right, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to let them drive away from me. Yep. And I ran out of talent really quickly. I like that you admit that you ran out of talent. Sometimes that's a tough thing to admit. You've driven obviously tons of road cars. What's your absolute favorite road car or dream car? Oh, the Chevrolet. Really? Oh, that that thing with that mountain. Yeah. First time with the uh, world's fastest gamers. Yeah, I think the idea behind it is pretty cool. It's a new way of finding new talents. That thing is pretty good. It's giving people opportunities that never thought they could make this as a career. Is Sim another actual road to racing now? I mean, you've got a son who's 14 now, I think. Yeah. Well, it will in the future for sure. Uh, right now, it's, the way I use it is a, it's a massive tool. Like, uh, we spend a lot of time with him and even myself in AIS in Miami. Yep. Simulators, we spend hours and hours and days there. Sure. From, from days that we do proper driving to days that we just, you know, goofing off. Yeah, yeah. well, that is, that is a fun side of it too. I think that's important. People often get a little too serious with it. Yeah, I mean, there's times to be serious, there's times to work, and there's times to have fun. And. I think it's part of everything. You know, when you have the passion for racing, you do want to be serious about it, but you want to have a kick out of it. Who's faster in a sim, Seb or you? Um, still a little quicker, but he's getting there. It's, it's, in the F4, he makes my life really miserable. <laughs> sure, that's uh, fun though. No. Yeah, it's what he's going to be racing, so it's, that's his main thing of driving. With the faster car, faster cars, I normally, you know, I mean, I've got a little more experience. The first known, I guess, example of sim being used was Jacques Villeneuve, 97, 96, excuse me, grabbed a computer game to learn the tracks. Did you use any sim well, or even I, gaming back then? 
I used to do a lot of gaming, yes. I was. I remember I used to play. Uh, I was a big fan of a game called Drift. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like a, a rally game. Yep. That was really really cool. Um, I played a lot of Gran Turismo, like a lot when I was a kid. Yep. Even when I was in F1, I used to play that. It's just for fun. Uh, but when I started in F1, we were already developing simulators. So when I left from a one, we used to prepare the race weekends on the simulator. Yep. I mean, we used to do setup work. We used to develop the car. We used to do everything there. And and nowadays, it's it's just a lot more accessible to people, you know. Do you play Mario Kart? I I did when we came out. Ow, like I was an addict, but <laughs> really. Oh, we're going to have to 1v1 at some point this week. We're going to have to give it a go, maybe when you're back in No, I haven't played since then. Are you retired? Like, yes. <laughs> but I, honestly, I made it all the way through, like, won everything in the game. Really? You did the whole campaign? Everything. I won everything. Someone like Riley, who's here, who qualified through a mobile game, has never been in a race car, going up against Mitchell DeYoung, who, sure, is an incredible sim racer, but is also a rallycross champion. Yeah, I mean, it makes it tough at the beginning, but if you got the talent to make it, on, on, you understand the basics. And the basics are the same, and it's a matter of connecting the field to the basic. I mean, and the cues are the same, because he's guiding himself through visual cues. And it's about connecting the visual with what your ass is telling you. Yeah, Nicky Lauda once said, I have the luxury of a good ass. That's, uh, that's something that they've all mentioned. Day one even, that they said, uh, I have so much more feedback than even in the sim. Yes, because getting the feedback on the sim is difficult. Yeah. It's like to learn what the, I mean, once you get it, it's really simple, but to understand. It's a different skill set. It's a different skill set, but it just makes you sharper. What's your favorite track in, uh, in the IMSA season? Because you guys do, you got like Sebring, Bumpy, Road Atlanta, kind of technical. Um, probably. I don't know. Road America's good, Road Atlanta's good. Probably we go to all the good trucks here. I know, yeah. This is hard to pick. I feel like Definitely it's not Sebring. No, I get too bumpy for you? No, no, I just suck at it. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you very much. We'll catch up with you later. I don't want to take too much of your time. You already did. <laughs> Perfect. Driving a real race car is a dream I have since I can think. I've been dreaming of being a racing driver since I'm a child. Everyone knows how difficult motorsport is to get into. Without any money, it is impossible. My name is Jan Mardenborough. I'm living proof there's another way.